Hello, War of the Visions fans. I'm Jackie Fox, and today I'm going to be doing a comment response video for a lot of recent comments. Um, I haven't had as much time to look through my comments, so I haven't been replying to these personally at the moment. So I figured I'd just answer you all in a video, save us both some time. Uh, thoughts on Halloween Fred now that she ignores guaranteed hit? I don't think she's evasive enough. Um, Halloween Fred has like always been a miss for me unfortunately for Halloween Fred and I think that she's one of those units that they give ignore guaranteed hit to like they haven't given it to a unit that can actually really stand up to the accuracy that exists in this game since Yuffie. Yuffie can be built to avoid accurate characters but also be able to avoid those with guaranteed hit she can dodge everybody and Halloween Fred just doesn't have that I think there are potentially like really good opportunities for earth evasion again lightning has just been historically very blind um, and Halloween Fred might be able to get away with some shit but I don't think that in the larger meta outside of that Halloween Fred would really be any good even now I mean that I guess it helps but like this is just a prime example of the units that they give it that to aren't going to be the ones that are and maybe that's for the best maybe that's a balanced thing um but Yuffie doesn't feel that broken I say as she carries the entire fire element before Bridalia and S. Glacy says flip gamer on a budget oh by the way last uh, last comment first comment of the video was Pikachu thank you Pikachu Flip Gamer on a budget says, before Bridalia and Escalacy, I managed to get top 150 to 200 niche in arena with Evade Elena, supported by Barts and Addison with Viz refreshes. Basically the same light team I I used. Um, and similar, like again, the upgraded version of the light team I was in number one with. Uh, definitely with Viz refreshes though. This probably might have been where I would have landed without them. Mainly did it by hunting water and light teams. Had one unit Elena spec'd for evade, and she still managed to dodge most of the time. The caveat, though, was that I actually went after teams that didn't spec for anti-evade. At that time, there were still plenty of those around rank 500 to 1000. Anytime I saw an Astrius with an Alex ring, though, I noped out of there real quick. I still think it's possible to make Halloween Lucio work, especially if you have somebody like Dialdo drawing hate. In order to shine, though, he's probably going to need his... He's going to need more. His VC, other VCs, Trust Tones, maybe Addison. Things that newbies might not have access to right now. Um, his VC is going to be good for him. It, it definitely gives him... like My two biggest complaints about him as an evasion unit... Um, his lack of agility and his lack of luck. That, that vision card solves both of those problems for the right team and i don't think that you necessarily play him on a job team i don't think that's where he's going to excel especially as an evasion unit i think you're right that like dialdo someone who can distract a lot more for him is going to be helpful uh it's definitely going to increase his survivability maybe addison as well someone who can give him courage um not really sure why these two would be on the same team together but like shalza maybe can also give courage um, maybe even someone like Sodley to give him re-raise. There are like options, but I, th I I'm not, I'm, I really hesitate to say that his VC is going to save him because in this video, I was actually running him on a team that has the luck and, um, agility VCs on it right so we have halloween monsters which is basically the same vc but for earth um so i'm already running him with his vc sources maxed for that kind of stuff so maybe having someone cast a survivability type thing on him would help um actually no uh the the real bonus of addison is the guaranteed hit avoidance because he doesn't have it in his kit. Her giving that to him in addition to courage. I mean, he doesn't need the courage. And the threshold heal would be nice. But hopefully, um, 
with three turns of that, that keeps him around for three turns. He can survive a hit, come in for it. Yeah, I think you're right, actually. Addison is really meant to support units like this. This is kind of why we got her, um, is to make evasion potentially work. So I think you actually make a really strong case for Addison Ray fixing some of the problems here. But for me, um, and you say that those are things that newer players might not have access to, and I guess that depends when you come in. You could be just old enough that you have Addison Ray and still be able to do that. That might be the sweet spot for this strategy. Because again, while he's arguably better than, in some ways, the Earth units that I was comparing him to for evasion, you also probably already have those kind of built. And you would have to build Lucio from, from the ground up. And I don't think for a lot of people that's gonna make sense unless you're new enough that you, you've never pulled a Zazan, that you uh, that your Katone game is still pretty weak, you know? Uh, then this guy is definitely worth building. Uh, if you're trying to play that kind of thing. I think you really have to do something extra like that, though. Um, Addison is definitely good support for him. I find it interesting that people test Halloween Lucio against units that his kit is not catered towards two. Maybe try him against the meta units like Bridal Alaya and Saul, says Manny Villanueva. Well, so the the beginning of the video, I could test him against Bridal Alaya um, as I have her, so I could run him as my companion. No, wait, I don't think it's companion week for him anymore. Um, my point was that Bridal Alaya is going to be a good matchup for him. Like, you're right. And... As you see in the video where I fight Bridal Alaya with the Earth Evasion team, they do pretty well. Um, also, the fight my Earth Evasion team versus Soul, they did pretty well. I'm not necessarily sure, uh, and it would be good to test him against those things if I pulled him, um, but really just using the friend unit, I wanted to see how he compared to units I'm already familiar with. Um, so that was... Ooh, kind of what I <laughs> what I did, but I would say that he does have good matchups there. Like you don't, um, depending on how they're equipped, though. I probably also could have demonstrated if I had done like two days in a row, two different matchups with two different sets of equipment, that Bridal Alaya may have some difficulty hitting him until she puts on an Alexandrite ring. In which case, I think she would be accurate enough to hit him pretty reliably, because again, like. Luel is not the most accurate unit. Um, while this isn't necessarily the team that makes him look good, except for the whole he can't hit evasion units thing, this isn't necessarily the team that makes him look bad either, you know? I'm not, it's not necessarily a hyper accurate team. I haven't even uh, <laughs> built the Brad or um, equipped the Bradley to be super accurate either. You know what I mean? So I think that this demonstrates something about him. And, you know, is that other piece of information valuable? Yes, it's just not one that I had time to accumulate this week. Water Dog. Hey, new player here. How do you get those crazy stats on your character? on your characters. I just started the game around the beginning of October, just doing story content. Okay. Wait. Okay, so in my background video here, I was going through some pulls with you and I just pulled Irving. So holy crap, I guess I'm gonna be building him. Um, but let me actually pause this and go into the game. So let's look at a formation. Um, part of the answer for why the stats were so big is it's a five person team. Um, one of the things that's gonna, so you're gonna have master abilities that are gonna be contributing a little bit of extra uh, attack yeah, you, well, no, that's not represented here, but a lot of extra HP. So you're going to have the highest HP on like a five person team. 
but also you're getting a lot of party abilities from your vision cards as well so 50 percent attack up i'm kind of maximizing the benefit of attack for that front vision card i don't have an attack vision card in the second slot But talking about evasion, right? So I'm trying to build up as much ac or as much agility. 15% here is the maximum, I think. And luck. So this is gonna be agility, spirit. It's gonna bestow a bunch of luck on the unit it's on. So actually, you know, looking at that, that is uh, that does make his VC a bit of an improvement in terms of that that card actually doesn't have party ability luck I, I still contend that it would probably be just as good on him but it would support the rest of the party a little bit better i guess but you'll see that there are a number of places stats are coming from you have first of all i'm using a legendary reliquary's weapon so this is um you are tier uh, about as strong as it gets, fully awakened. Um, although, you don't have to awaken these at all. You just have to unlock these to get their max stats in terms of just like raw stats if you're just looking for big numbers. This is the stuff that you unlock by awakening it and by furthering, further completing the Legendary Reliquaries content. I think you can probably unlock these weapons at your level, probably, maybe. Because you just have to beat the first couple of waves, and that shouldn't be too hard. Um, at the very least, that'll, this will offer you like one of each weapon, or one of most weapons, that'll at least be a big stat stick for you right now while you're building other stuff. Um, as you get better teams and can more unlock these abilities, they're really amazing. So that's one of the answers. This isn't providing me a ton of stats, but a lot of crit, some accuracy. Um, it's really doing more of this stuff, which isn't necessarily reflected in the big numbers. And then for... This is a system that's been improved a lot, but it's still not... Oh, oh, I... It's been QOL'd a lot, right? So the Trust Zone system has been improved quite a bit since it was first rolled out. Um, I'm running Spirit, Spirit Set here. Um, which is also going to give me a set bonus three additional spirit on top of that healing power up 10 And then my other side I have AP so that's going to give me max AP up 10 AP cost rate down 10 And that's in addition to all of these passives now I've heard that they're going to be introducing an option where we're not we're not rolling these There's no RNG to this anymore. We actually get to choose the passives in the future so maybe stockpile the stuff that you need to craft stockpile tickets that kind of thing but maybe not go crazy into this until we get like post anniversary qol um, because i think you could really get very specific builds and very specific passive sets a lot more easily than we've been able to historically but having these at their max level and all of that, that's adding a lot of stats. All the green ups you see over here, that's what's being added to this. And you'll see with like dexterity, 21 up, 21 total. You know, it's getting all of its dexterity from this. All of its evasion from this, all of its accuracy, all of its crit, all of its critical evade, all of its luck, all of its magic, all of its attack, all of its AP, TP, and about half of that HP. So these uh, trust runes are contributing actually a lot of stats to this piece of equipment, stacking it up really heavily and that can add to the stats of our boy here too. But that's just the three slots of equipment. We've talked about vision cards. I'm also using a, uh, one of the more premium espers. This is one of the dark espers. Actually the first one, but still quite good, especially for evasion and uh, that makes it a little bit of an odd choice for him, in particular. Probably do something more like this, but uh, he has a lot more evasion potential than Oberon does, I guess. Although Oberon could easily equip this, which is also pretty fast. So let me let me switch some things out, see what happens. This Esper is really kind of built for him. Okay, so...
So another thing that may be going away with QOL is a resonance. So you got to get your resonance levels with espers to 10. And that's going to get you 100% of the stats at level 1 or level 0 or whatever the default is. You're getting 10%. You get 10% per level. So at level 10, you're getting 100% of that. They also want to keep an eye out for passives. This is an attack razor. So that's part of my attack stat there. That's just buffing my movement. That's why I have four movement. Okay, fair. Being sure that you unlock master abilities also too can be important. Um, again, these master abilities, especially the first one, is going to give you a party buff. It's almost like a vision card on each unit to a very small uh, respect in that your allies HP 10%, allies earth attack 15%. That's going to be for your whole party, and every one of your Earth units is going to have a buff like that on them, which is going to build up the team. This is one of the things that makes a mono elemental team so powerful, in that there's not really a job based uh, counterpart to that, especially. So that can push the stats up quite a bit as well. And um, let's actually look. Take a look inside of him to see if there's anything that you might be missing in how you're building him. The system has gotten a lot better to... That wasn't where I wanted to go though. Okay, so there's going to be um, one stat node per character once they get to 120 you can level that up here that's going to contribute to stats but also making sure you get especially this one but also all the little ones as well there's a lot of stats on the board and that's where that big stat node is this one can be leveled up all the way to 20 that's going to give you a bunch of stats as well other than that, I would recommend, <laughs> depending on what the weapon type is, if you're trying to see which one has kind of the best uh, stuff for you, I have a series on a lot of the most popular weapon types. I'm adding to that as we get more legendary reliquary stuff, and as we get more options for certain weapons, we still only have like three or four non-limited options to choose from, so it's not usually a hard choice for those. Um, I focus on more things like swords where there's like, I don't know, 20 or 30 of those and I'm trying to find like what the top five are for various situations. Those videos could be really helpful to you as a new player, but I'm going to stop plugging myself and go back to this poll video. Get back to reading some comments. <laughs> Looking at... Uh, this is Jean Ventura. Looking at Katona and Sasan's kit, they are very underwhelming when compared to Lucio. He can evade as much as them. In the context of Earth, he's maybe maybe he's redundant for older players. But we but when we get into his kit, even there's an argument. He has more agility, at least for the first three turns, than the others. I mean it is possible that like the friend build just is bad in terms of agility. Um, they were specifically using the Hermes sandals though. That should be a big buff. Um, <laughs> his main buff gives him 25% agility. Okay. So that's basically vitalize or haste. There's, um, you know, like there's ways that these other characters can get that, especially easy. And you know, it's probably also stackable with some of Renoa's shenanigans as well. So, like, I mean, I'm not like arguing that he doesn't have some cool kit here, um, and he does have some interesting stuff uh, in terms of like his capabilities of things that he can do uh, in addition to damage, but. 
if if you're really impressed by that, all the things that his damage can do on paper, I have another evasive earth unit for you, and that is Resnick the Hoppy. Um, because if you really want a unit that can do an impressive number of things on paper, and also looks pretty evasive if you squint, oh, I'm just rolling. Uh, she's a good example of that because technically she can deal with any defensive strategy or she could at the time she was released um, even more so than this guy I think she can also get rid of courage and, and other stuff like that um, definitely not as much of an invasion unit though she was probably more well he's also kind of in the vein of a strider too Uh, yeah, Catone can stop pretty reliably, especially if you run her with high faith. And yeah, his resistances are better because that's one of the ways that things have power crept. Again, I think he's probably in... Like, if, if I just had the units, if they just gave me the units at 140, who would I use... Probably him, maybe. I, I would love to try. I would love to run him in 200 cost units, specifically right now with the 270 cost limit. That would be really cool. But, and yeah, again, for, for like older players, especially older Earth players, you're going to have things that are definitely going to be able to compete with this. But... Like, who else is this for, right? Because I just made a, a job tier video, and Axe did really poorly, right? So if this guy isn't for Earth players, if he isn't for Evasion players, <laughs> if he isn't for Axe players, because no Axe unit is for Axe players, because Axe players don't exist, and if you do, how was your football career? Because you seriously have some cognitive issues that may have been spurred on by one too many blows to the head if you really think that's going to work. At least right now. Like, in the future, maybe, but this is a limited unit, and making that call on, like, an ambiguous future seems a little bit sketchy. Uh... First time putting all of this down, and it looks like the power creep got out of hand, or I'm missing something on the kit of the older units. Um, so there is another part. I would say that if they have a more fitting, in that they're both ninja blade units, they have a more fitting um, legendary reliquaries weapon. In that they can get a passive evasion boost on criticals, they also both crit really reliably. Um, yeah, Catone can be a little bit of a mosquito, but she actually hits really reliably. You're missing that she has um, Paralyzing Edge, which is surprisingly helpful. Um, and when you're running her with High Faith to take advantage of Stop, which is also absolutely brutal, Stop just ends things for people, um, then whenever she runs into like an evasion mirror she's going to start paralyzing people not all the time but she's also going to be hitting them pretty reliably and i mean it works um i'm not saying that these are great units and like katone especially i feel worse and worse um the more i reincarnate her because she definitely gets better with reincarnation especially drain force but she's also getting worse compared to other units because of power creep. And so you're right about that. But again, having built them, there's still arguments that I would make for them. Anyways, uh, I, I think they're both really strong. And yes, he may compete with them a lot better than I would think, but I just think that like he's too close to them and they're doing too bad right now. Because as you say, they're not doing great. You're right. Um, but at the same time, as I've said before and have said many times before, I want to couch all of this in the fact that Earth Evasion is always going to be a certain amount of good as long as lightning remains like default blonde. So 
I'm not saying that this guy is unusable. There's definitely people who are going to find a, a good way to do this, but, you know. Spiegel. This may not be the place for this, but as a new player, who do you recommend I start out with? Nice. I got the 120 units, and I have enough Vizior for either Renoa, Halloween Lucio, or really anyone. Um... Ooh, that's a good question. So, right now... The, the unit that's really doing the best and is looking the best in long term that you can get at the moment would be Bridal Alaya, but she's not easy to get at the moment. You just kind of have to luck into getting her. Um, but I guess you're not like in a reroll situation, so that's probably not relevant for that. Um, in terms of the Reincarnation Fest units, though... They're all pretty good for their element. If you were starting out, though, I think the ones that are probably going to be the most helpful for you are the tanks. So maybe Dialdo or Roth. Dialdo especially would go with Renoa. You already have her. She's free. So you you don't have to pull her. You don't have to pity her. Um, so that's a really good combination right now. Usually... I would advise new players to, and it's it's hard to have the insight to do this, but to kind of look at what what you can do as your path of least resistance. And I think that Dialdo is a really good tank, very stubborn. He's gotten a little bit power crept, but the only tanks that are just like a whole tier of uh, stronger than him, I would say, are limited. So he's well more limited than him he's also pretty limited you're not going to see him outside of this event another reason i would recommend to go for him now but also i think that there's definitely potential to hold out a little bit and maybe get something better in the future um in that it feels like the meta is getting shaken up right now and that means that I don't know, that might take a couple months. Um, there is going to be a new form of Astrius coming out in Lightning. Very powerful, I think, great sword user. And there's also going to be a great sword coming from Legendary Reliquaries that's going to be, like, powerfully defensive. Very, very cool uh, sword. Anyways, um, those are some options like lightning or earth are both doing really good right now uh the ability to build renoa for free though is pretty neat um i think that astrius is probably a more fun way to go than dialdo but dialdo is good and stable um dialdo could anchor an account pretty well i think because if you've got a good tank you can build around that effectively especially if you have a, a good tank and a good healer now you just need your damage unit and you can trade that up as you go um unfortunately for earth the premier damage unit right now is king bradley from the full metal alchemist collaboration and I am going to be a literal skeleton before they rerun any of the off-brand collabs. So, um, I'm not really sure who you're running for damage necessarily. I wouldn't recommend it be Halloween Lucio, though. He, uh, well, you've seen the rest of the video at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's terrible. In fact, he's probably really easy to pull. It might be a path of least resistance. It's just, it takes so many resources to take characters to 140 and make them playable. Like, I just don't think he's it. He doesn't... Uh, 70 costs are a big investment unless you really want to play it, you know? It's funnier when the banner is aggressive to you and, you know, you rolled the squall. Go talk to a wall. <laughs> Can't even be nice in this game, LMAO. <laughs> right on, Kasumi. Uh, Mega Rare says, So glad I could max my King Mont. This event has been a miracle. Yeah, it's it's really made it a lot cheaper to get some of those characters. Like, I'm, I'm sure... And it's also really cool that they're doing it for every element simultaneously. Like, I was just thinking, yeah, I'm sure this has been great for Fire players, but also, like, Dark players are maxing that Raph right now, for sure. Earth players are maxing their Dialdos. Um, water players, or Strike players, maxing out their Perines. Pretty cool. 
This game has FF4 Kane, right? Uh, also Katsumi. Someone should put Gurns back next to him because for the life of me, I cannot tell the two of them apart. <laughs> I mean, it's a cool design and all, but they all and all just the Dragoon. I bet Final Fantasy MMOs have a ton of lookalikes too. Yeah, um, and and honestly, like even well before after Kane came out in this game, well before Gernsback came out, like he was in the game. We saw his armor. We knew what he looked like. I mean, it was a shame. I personally thought it was a shame that Kane entered the game only because I liked Gernsback armor better. It just looks a little bit cooler. <laughs> So it's a shame that he looks like Gernsback, you know, I mean, that he looks like Kane, and that Kane looks like Gernsback, but you're right, um, also, most of the nation of, of Heinler, uh, or at le least the dragoons, I don't know, I guess, uh, I guess there's a, not like a large creative palette for what you, what you, uh, can make a dragoon like i don't know i got lucky with halloween lucia but kept rolling on that nine set banner for spears and stuff is it worth it seems like getting 40 shards for 2k and units is a good deal and say that you're you're keep you want to you want to keep rolling is the question because you're right um the going rate for 40 shards is 2k biz so if you're on step five and you get what you want then yeah it's worth it going to step six um if you have another character that you want out of it and i mean this is the advantage of 70 cost units like this is they're really easy to pull and they're really easy to pity on banners like this then yeah, there is kind of an argument to keep going. I mean, you could go six and then seven, get some mind spheres too. I will say mind spheres aren't quite as valuable because they don't come with soul metals. Um, that's the difference between shards and, you know, shards can turn into mind spheres, but you also gain soul metals. You don't when you just get the mind spheres straight up like that. So they're not quite worth 2K, but yes, getting potential units, getting pulls and getting bonuses and getting, um, in addition to that, wait, is this? One of the drawbacks to this one, it looks like there are no event coins on this one. So usually you begin the event coins to trade for 10 shards on every step with a lot of these other banners. And you're not getting that here, probably because the rates are just I mean, not the rates are good, but you know, you can you can nine step pity into a unit of your choice. And again, there are great units here to choose from. So yes, like situationally, but maybe not pull all the way through the nine step and maybe not like do the nine steps obsessively if you've already gotten your unit because usually it's better to just straight up buy the shards or do something else but you're right in this particular case if you're getting 40 shards on the next step for 2k you might as well take the free pull uh essentially i'm skipping new characters altogether since i'm trying to raise like six bonus characters already <laughs> three ff8 flag bearer glacella as starter pick and two from the popularity poll i got spooked by all more Kasumi. Listen, I started because my friend who's been playing would have told me whenever it's free, I got the FF8 characters, and then they have Halloween event. Understandable, two at the same time. But that's not all. There's a rerun of old. Jesus fuck. <laughs> There's a rerun of old Halloween characters and three new characters on separate banners. One for a card and a reincarnation campaign. It's like three major events and a half dozen minor at the same time. What is happening with this game? I know there's a merger with the Japanese version and ketchup. This is still too much stuff at the same time. Doing it during FGO's Halloween themed event somewhat overlaps with my old rerun and they both end a week before Halloween doesn't help. Nothing does. My phone is basically tied to a charger because I am toggling between two competing games, <laughs> not just during free time, but also farming while I work. Help. 
Um, <laughs> there's no help for us. I'm sorry, Katsumi. Uh, but yeah, so we're going into an anniversary is one of the things. That's why there's eight different units for the reincarnation thing. And that... Whew, that's a lot. Um, usually there are two sorts of events running at the same time because this game likes to be able to update its older units while also at the same time releasing new units. It likes to do these two things at the same time and it's good that it does so. It was one of my earlier issues that they with the game that they didn't do this well enough and that older units were slipping between the cracks. And yeah, there's been some power creep recently that's push some people through cracks, but um, older units tend to keep up, so you can kind of invest in this game long term pretty well. That being said, as a newer player, if it's not a new unit, I wouldn't pull for it. I wouldn't necessarily mind building it. There are some really good units that aren't brand new, but in terms of what I would build, all things being equal, I would really highly go towards the newer stuff and that can narrow down these banners a bit for you because you can ignore most of the Halloween units. Also worth pointing out that 70 cost units are pretty easy to pull but they usually don't make as big of a splash in the meta. The Halloween units are a little bit different, they're a little bit better especially at that 70 cost and they tend to be, well, Okay, not the Earth units that have been released so far, um, but other than that, they tend to be really effective in stuff like the cost-limited guild battle that we have right now, in which, you know, I'm running Lucia on Dark. I'm sure there's a lot of wind players that are running uh, Little Leela as well. Very happy with her upgrade. Um, like I said earlier, uh, Halloween Lucia, very beginning of the video, never been a hit for me. I think it might help her a little bit um, getting guaranteed hit avoidance, but I don't think she's evasive enough in most builds to really benefit from it. And unfortunately, Halloween Raryu has always been a bad unit that you maybe get for his TMR, although that's less true these days because Reraise is getting more and more removable. In fact, Halloween Lucio does it, so, you know, just another unit that gets rid of Reraise, so maybe he's not even worth getting for his TMR. So what I would say is focus on what you already have because it seems like you have got a lot of spinning plates already and you know put put down the crystals put down the vizior for right now just focus on what you've got and really take advantage of the hard quests giving you six shards for two runs a day like I'm so happy that lasted another week I hope it runs like all month it's lovely, I love it, let's do it, let's go, ah, uh, yes, yes. You still have time, pull for Halloween Lucio, best Halloween unit by a country mile, and amazing in W. Elia Soul meta. You'll regret if you don't. I mean, like, the thing is, the, e even though I don't think he's bad, I'm never going to pull him unless they give him to me for free, and I'm out of tickets. I've already tried all my free tickets, they didn't give me free. Um, and it's really just because it's a lot of resources to take a unit from 1 to 140, and I already have Earth Evasion units that can deal with this kind of stuff perfectly well. I mean, I know it's like I'm telling myself I already have Halloween Lucio at home. And this is my Halloween Lucio at home, okay? Just, like, <laughs> don't judge me. I've got to save money and resources where I can. Counter Smoke says, thanks for the video. Always great content. Thumbs up. Thanks, my dude. Max out my Dialdo. And then finish the units I've been working on for a long time, says Spicy Donut. Hell yeah, you are... I... I'm not even sure necessarily what element you play, Spicy, but, like, I... You have, I, I want you to understand, you have cemented yourself so much in my mind for your Earth strategy that I think of you as an Earth player, so it seems very fitting that it's time for you to max out your Dialdo. What is the JP app ticket for? No one knew the answer to that, but um, now we do. Uh, so those will give you one free unit or VC 
per pull. It's a tin pull. It's going to give you a bunch of other stuff. I did a ton of them at the beginning of this video. And every 11th pull is going to be a guaranteed UR. Every 11th pull. You have to do 10 pulls and then a guaranteed UR pull. So if you have 44 tickets, you can get 4 URs. If you have 43 you're only going to get three you'll get close to that last one but you'll need one more ticket don't worry though they're easy enough to get this has been super helpful for my tanks for fire and dark absolutely absolutely and again earth like i said um and i've said this a couple times during this video i think the most exciting things in the reincarnation fest if you need an anchor for your account are the tanks they are Three great tanks. Um, Mont maybe showing his age a bit more, but like I guess they have like the main character syndrome with him. He just keeps getting good upgrades. Not amazing, but good enough to keep him relevant. And uh, I mean, long term, what what more could you want from a unit? Staying power. Andrew JT says. I know everyone has been ragging on Squall, but I picked him up anyways since Final Fantasy VIII is my favorite game. And honestly, I think a lot of the hate is overblown. He's not going to wreck a team with consistent CT up and overtuned to hell damage, but he does hit hard and he has pretty good AP management. And he's really hard to bring down, especially since Strike and Slash are really common PvE enemies. He's been great in soloing brutal multi stages with the Blood Sword. Yeah, actually, um, wow, he would be really great with the Blood Sword, wouldn't he? I mean, like, units that can beef through some things are really great with the Blood Sword in general, so that would be really good on him. And, like, if he was released in a world where Summer Glacella and Bride Lilia didn't exist, he would be a hit. He would be a star. Like, if his main competition were Soul. He would be a star right now, but like, I, I think everybody got a taste of the good stuff and we were like, <sighs> Squall, okay, fine. Which is a shame because it feels like almost the same thing that happened to Cloud, where he's great, lots of people use him, but he's just a little bit underwhelming in a way that everybody wanted him to be amazing. Wizkid replies to that though, that's the problem though. It's not that he's bad, it's that he got thrown in between units that are way too over the top. He's perfectly usable and actually good for anyone who chooses to build him though. Thanks for your advice y'all. Just make an MR cup for fuck's sake. I mean, I could run an MR cup. Uh, hit me up on my discord. Maybe we'll do an MR cup for ya. Okay, so getting a, a, a comment on an older video actually here from Katsumi. Just started and wanted to see what I should buy in the beginner shop. Want to be able to crap later without hassle. Skipped plus five version of Golden Helmet and the coat and got stuff that I will actually need now instead. Got all I wanted from event, not interested in Halloween units, so I'll save some viz after maintenance. Well, I'm glad I'm finally seeing a comment from you about saving biz, and best of luck with your multi-game management, Kasumi. Uh, one of our last sets of comments. My personal opinion from ArtsDev, ArtsDiv, sorry. Uh, my personal opinion is Ferris is S. She attack, she protect, and she heal. Hee <laughs> hee. Yep, absolutely. Do you know if there are any collab reruns are possible in this game? Sorry I'm new to this game and had to re-roll my account. So if you're talking about collaborations like Final Fantasy collaborations, they tend to get rerun like every year to two. Um, we haven't seen a lot of them multiple times yet. Often they get rerun because they're adding in like a villain or something. There's a new unit. Like with Final Fantasy V, we got that back when I'm sorry, 6. Final Fantasy 6, we got that back when they released Kefka. With Final Fantasy 4, we got that back when they released um, Golbez, I believe. So, for those, yes, that is possible. It just might take a little while. Also, Pixel Remaster is going to be updating a lot, if not all of them, but 
that seems like we might not get it. It's weird because it's a huge update and nobody's talking about it. And I'm just going to keep bringing it up because of that. Um, so that's odd. But if you're talking about collaborations with things outside of Final Fantasy, like Nier Automata or Full Metal Alchemist, if you're wondering if you can get your hands on a King Bradley anytime soon, well, you know, unfortunately to you and to A2 fans, because let's face it, if they do another Nier Automata collab, we're getting A2. Um, those collaborations, none of those collaborations outside of Final Fantasy have ever been rerun in this game in its entire history. I don't expect them to start anytime soon. But if they did, it would probably be with Nier Automata, honestly. Probably A2 would be the first one. Um, and we'd get 2B and 9S back. Maybe 9S back as a free unit again. That'd be cool. I I can't say this. L Lajos Walterdorf? Waltersdorf? says a lie gets 25 accuracy from her 140 she can reach 160 accuracy with just odin alex ring and her own bc and sub slot that's pretty high tbh i play her with s glacy who gives 40 accuracy with her aura buff easily hunting evade comps yeah you know what actually um i don't think i realized that that aura buff also gives accuracy that's just fucking mean <laughs> <laughs> that aura buff is amazing. God, Summer Clayshella just keeps getting better. But yeah, that is pretty much the premium uh, set for her. The thing is, like, most people don't do that, necessarily. Like, that is a really good combination, and in, um, I think, this video and in, no, it's in my elemental tier list and my job-based tier list, I mentioned that exactly the team that you're running he is really strong for a lot of reasons and really this is just another great example of why they're a great combination in that she makes it flawlessly easy to support the accuracy of her teammates as well and that's definitely something that's helpful for her but you're right like and this is true of a lot of characters not just her but She's definitely one that can have trouble with evasion and is probably going to get a little bit of a reputation for having trouble with evasion. But um, definitely, and especially outside of lightning teams, she can definitely be worked into lightning hunting comps, especially. But again, I think she's going to get a reputation for being somewhat blind, mainly because she's the lightning unit. She's going to be used on lightning teams. Lightning teams don't really have good accuracy support, as I'm sure you know. But then again, you could always run Alexandrite Ring, some of stuff like that, and uh, that's really going to be kind of the top tier choice for her. Uh, at least in dealing with evasion or keeping yourself like stable, kind of having a good wall that nobody can take down. John Knight says, I'm just ready for a new Dragon Class quest collab for Sarah's 140. Yeah, you and every other fire player, I think. He's amazing. It's really ridiculous that he has stuck around so long as a 120. I think he's gonna stick around for a while as a 120. Just being a very impressive unit, but uh oof, the uh the long term look for him is just bleak. I'm also John Knight. Um I just made Squall's VC wasn't job based, strike resistant, just element based. I mean, paired with Skahal's VC, a bolt team gets 40 strike resist off those two VCs, which a lot of other elements lack VC wise. Yep, that's a that's a really good point for lightning, but also light and fire, obviously because of Sol. Um, also have good options for this, like. Especially like light evasion, oddly enough. Maybe not the team that you necessarily want to run into, especially like the high accuracy strike teams I was just talking about. But they do benefit from the fact that they get 20 strike resistance off of Elena's vision card, which is fairly mandatory. I mean, there are other luck vision cards for, for light now, but you probably want that on your team. And if you run it main, you've got 20 strike resistance right there. No way Addison Ray is good in an FF game. Well, she's top tier. I don't know what to tell you, man. <laughs> it, it is what it is. 
Pepe PM7 VP says, Man, Miss the Legend Verish, his 140 is amazing. And that's where I'm going to cut y'all off today. Thank you for watching. It has been a pleasure having you. Enjoy the rest of your day, your week. Enjoy your Halloween. Have some spooky fun. And remember, don't take things so seriously. Save up because there's probably crazy things coming in the future. The anniversary is probably going to have some wild deals. But also, remember to reincarnate any of these uh, reincarnation fest units that you have. That, that half off on the scrolls is really cool. And, you know, this is a really good time, especially if you're playing Dialdo or Roth, because they are limited, um, to just go ahead and build those guys up. Like, I'm trying to pull them right now, which is painful, and not necessarily something I recommend, but... If you have them, and if they're part of your strategy, definitely build them up, make them the best they can be, so that you can go into whatever this unknown future holds, with your head up high and your units strong. So, <laughs> thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, man. This helps the channel so much, and comment on this video. Maybe you'll show up in the next comment response video. And as you're working your way down to the comment section, keep in mind there is a link in the description that will lead you to the rest of the Jackie Fox Media Empire. I stayed up super late last night editing a really uh, pretty long podcast um, with my girlfriend about the history of class and horror movies. I know I've been talking about it a lot in a lot of these videos, finally. It has been made, it is done, it is released. I'm gonna to listen to it for, well, it's not released yet, but uh, it probably will be by the time you hear this, hopefully. Um, but I'm about to like, you know, proof, proof listen, make sure everything's okay. Um, all sorts of other stuff like that can be found in that link in the description, including ways to support the channel, send me money, all that kind of stuff. But no matter what you choose to do, thank you for watching this video of all videos um, where you're probably not going to learn anything handy. But, you know, there were some moments. I had I had some moments um, of, of genuine education. But uh, thank you for just listening to the sound of my voice, and I'll see you in the next one.